If you missed recent Solana airdrops, this video is for you because today I'm going to be going over one of the most exciting ecosystems in the crypto world. You've heard about it. It's called Injective. I'm going to be giving you my full Injective airdrop guide in what I believe could be one of the most lucrative ecosystems of 2024. And the best news is that you have a chance to get in early if you're watching this video right now. There's a lot happening in the crypto airdrop space right now. This is going to be a lucrative season. In fact, it already is. And when other protocols see the successes of those airdrops, they're also going to want to FOMO into doing their own airdrops. And then the airdrop snowball really starts. So today we're going to focus on Injective. I'm doing this because honestly, I'm just really excited about it. I did my Solana videos like one or two months before, and I still think there are opportunities on Solana as well, but I'm starting to shift. Now I'm just prioritizing Celestia and Injective as well, a little bit of Cosmos, but the main focus of today's video is going to be Injective. So the agenda for today's video is I'm going to show you how to qualify for Injective mainnet airdrops. I'm going to show you the top mainnet airdrops that I'm personally focusing on, and I'm going to show you how to qualify for Injective testnet airdrops. These are airdrops that don't require you to put any capital in, so they're essentially free. Usually they are slightly smaller than mainnet airdrops, but for those that don't have a budget, this can be a great option. Some of you at the end of this video might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed because there's gonna be a lot of information, but at the end, I'll just give you a full summary and a breakdown and an easy way to get started. Now, all of these airdrops are time sensitive, some of which are more time sensitive than the others. Some of these airdrops will be relevant for months to come, even if you just watch this video, I don't know, two months later. But some really do have more time pressure on them. Let's get started. I've always said that the best marketing for a project is actually price going up. Because when the price of a token goes up, that gets people interested in the ecosystem, gets them holding the token, staking the token. That ends up increasing the amount of total users on a network. So the price of Injective is actually working wonders for the future prospects of the ecosystem and thus the potential of its airdrops because what it does is it incentivizes new developers to build on Injective due to the stronger wealth effect. So more money in the ecosystem as well as increased user interest. Because developers want to develop on protocols where they know there's a community and where they know there'll be actual users to use their products, right? If they build on a ghost chain, there's a chance that their product never gets adopted. So the injective price going up has led to more users in the ecosystem, which is of course leading to more development. So the best strategy to qualify is of course staking, validated staking. The second one is mainnet interaction. And the third one, which is free, is testnet interaction. So let's start with the number one, which is validated staking. And of course, this is the most important one. Now, what is Injective doing? They're replicating the playbook that Cosmos has outlined. Now, if you don't know what Cosmos does, essentially, if you stake the Atom token, you will get access to a bunch of Cosmos applications that deploy on Cosmos. Now, Injective was one of them. So people that stake the Atom token into validators on Cosmos received the Injective airdrop. They also received airdrops like Kajira, which has been a strong performer. They received airdrop like Osmosis, of course, last cycle. The big one was Luna, and people that were staking Cosmos made a lot of money from that, of course. So the Cosmos ecosystem was super lucrative, and the only way to get involved with that ecosystem is to stake Atom. Now, it's a similar thing on Injective. The only way to get access to the Injective ecosystem is to stake Injective. Now, of course, there are direct protocol interactions that you can do across mainnet and testnet, but the primary way and the first step to access these Injective airdrops is simply to stake Injective. So how do you stake Injective? The first thing you'll need is an Injective wallet. I personally use the Kepler wallet. You can also use the Leap wallet, both these wallets are compatible with the Cosmos network. Your standard wallet like MetaMask, not gonna cut it. It's not compatible because MetaMask is just for EVM chains. Let's say like Ethereum or Avalanche. So what do you wanna do? You wanna go over to Kepler.app, click on install wallet, just like all the other ones. And now 
the first thing that you'll need to do is of course to buy injective or hold injective. The token price at the time of recording this video is $37, but it has been a highly volatile token recently. So this could be anywhere between 20 to maybe even $80 by the time you're watching this video. All you need to do is to buy it somewhere, any exchange, as you can see the supported ones. Then transfer that from your wallet into your Kepler wallet. And then your next step, once you have your injection, is to go ahead and stake it. I'm not gonna go over it. It's fairly simple. Everybody knows to do this. I don't wanna waste your time. You simply select the validator, delegate your injective, and it's really that simple. You start earning APY and you put yourself in line for some nice ecosystem airdrops. So once you've done that, now we can move on to strategy number two, which is main net interaction. So. You can have your injective staked into validator nodes. But the next step to really maximize your chances of getting that airdrop is to actually use them. And it's simply because protocols think about it from their perspective. They want to incentivize genuine users on the network. They want to incentivize people that not only stake in their validators passively, but actually use and interact and become part of their community. And that's what airdrop farming is all about, protocols just want users. They want to reward genuine people that are using their products. And when you think about it like this, airdrop farming becomes really simple. You're trying to show or to prove with your actions that you're a loyal supporter of that project. And they usually look at a few things. Are those people interacting with the features on the protocol? Are they doing it over a consistent and prolonged period of time? And how much size are they using on the protocol? because they tend to want to reward people that use more size. Now, that's not to say if you use like 50 or $100 that you can't get an airdrop. In fact, there's been a lot of cases I personally just got some accidentally where I just, I don't know, invested 50 or $100 and it went up to thousands. So you certainly can, but of course, obviously, the more capital you use, the bigger the chances. It's basically, you know, Maths, right? They distribute it based on size a lot of the time, but sometimes that's not the case. So let's run through the three main net airdrops. I'm prioritizing the first one, which is Black Panther. We talked about it before. The first step here is, of course, to stake injective in their validator. Now, the next thing you can do is to actually take part in their official point reward system, which will eventually be redeemable for Black, which is their official governance token when the token launches. So to qualify for an airdrop, obviously you can stake in their validator, but you can also deposit liquidity into their vaults. The second protocol I want to discuss is Talus protocol. Talus is the biggest NFT marketplace on Injective, and I'm treating this one similar to the Blur airdrop. They've already announced that 5% of their supply will be distributed to people that stake Injective on their validator, basically trade NFTs on the platform. So you obviously want to focus on building volume via NFT trading and holding popular NFT collections on the platform. So it's very simple. You can just trade some NFTs, hold some NFTs and stake in their validator. And obviously the amount of capital that you do this with is completely up to you and how much you're willing to risk. And the third one that I want to talk about today is Helix. Helix is the premier decentralized crypto exchange built on Injective. And this one allows you to trade cross-chain crypto assets and perpetuals with market-leading rebates. If you just visit these sites and do these things that we talked about, stake and then interact, depends on which one of these needs what, you have a chance to qualify for an airdrop. Obviously, more interaction and more capital is going to bring you more chances. And that said, you know, it's not rocket science. These are all speculations, however, but these are the speculations that you got to have if you want to get these airdrops. That's it for today. Thanks for your attention and I'll catch you next time.